Welcome to our Easter service from Stanley Road Baptist Church. If you don't know, my name's Stephen Hewitt, and it's a great pleasure that I can uh, today on this Easter Sunday wish you a happy Easter. Uh, maybe you're used to being in a church service on Easter Sunday, so you'll probably know what to say when I say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So we celebrate today the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We look back on, on Friday. The Good Friday, yes, we look back and we describe it as good because Jesus Christ is dying for our sins. But it seems like death is what our enemy has been victorious. But three days later, when they went to the tomb, the tomb was empty. No, death did not have victory. Our enemy had not won. God was the victor. Some words from Psalm 150, just to give us that right focus on this day. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and the lyre, praise him with tambourine and dancing, praise him with the strings and pipe, praise him with a clash of cymbals, praise him with resounding cymbals, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We pray that today, through this service, on this Easter day, you will be able to praise the Lord. But I don't know about you, I wonder what you think it was like all those years ago, almost 2,000 years ago. What might it have been like in Jerusalem on that Sunday morning? Well, the wonderful team at Lumo, who produced some amazing, amazing gospel-based videos, they've had a go. This is what they've put together, how it might have been on that Sunday morning. It was preparation day that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learnt from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Resurrection turned the world on its head. Here's a short call to worship to focus our minds. It is fitting that the heavens should rejoice and that the earth should be glad, and that the whole world, both visible and invisible, should keep the feast. For Christ is risen, the everlasting joy. Now all things are filled with light, heaven and earth, and all places under the earth. All creation celebrates the resurrection of Christ. It is the day of resurrection. Let us be glorious in splendour for the celebration. Let us embrace one another. Let us speak also, brothers and sisters, to those that hate us. 
and in the resurrection let us forgive all things. So let us cry, Christ has risen from the dead, by death trampling on death, and has bestowed life to those who were dead. A call to worship, and now an opportunity to worship in song, with the wonderful Thine be the glory. i mm-hmm. 
Let us pray. Living God, we worship you today with joy in our hearts and thanksgiving on our lips. When the powers of evil had done their worst, crucifying your son and burying him in death, you raised him to life again, an act of power giving hope to the world. Lord Jesus, we rejoice that death could not keep you in its grip, that you were raised to life, alive forevermore. You greeted your friends, and now you stand amongst us in your risen power. Spirit of God, you are always giving life to the people of God, giving birth to children of God. Remodel us in the image of Jesus, fill us with his love, and enable us with his risen power that we might be faithful to his way, used by you in the redeeming of your world. Amen. It's amazing when we saw the video, the Lumo video there was of the resurrection account in Mark's Gospel, where it finishes on verse 8, Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. If you've got your Bibles open, look at the end of Mark's Gospel, you see that actually 12 verses possibly may have been added because there was concern that that was a bit of a defeatist finish finish to the gospel that they were afraid but actually that was the reality as we see in the other gospels that was a stage that the women and the disciples that was a stage they were going through there was a great fear we read elsewhere that they were locked away for fear of the jews so what had happened that meant these same people within days were out preaching in the city square and within a few weeks months and certainly years they were out leaving their homeland and going to all corners of the known world, taking the good news of Jesus. Did they just have a, a, a get together and say, come on, we need to do better, we need to be bolder? Well, no, as Christians, we have experienced, just like the disciples in particular experienced, they saw Jesus face to face, the risen Lord Jesus, after the resurrection that turned them from fearful people here, they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. They moved from being fearful to being, being fearless. They really went for it. They could be bold. They knew they'd experienced the life-changing truth that no longer did the devil have victory. No longer did it seem like there was no hope. Now there was hope. There was truth. They had seen the embodiment of God's love, Jesus Christ. He died, died for our sins. The sky went dark as the punishment of the sin that we've made before God has taken on the shoulders of Christ. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. As, that, as our sin is paid for, we can now enter into the presence of God. But also, we know that those things are true because the resurrection is like the rubber stamp. It's proof that God the Father accepts the sacrifice of the Son. There is hope. We can have confidence. When Paul writes to the Corinthian church, and when he wants to remind them to be confident, he tells them to go back to the resurrection, to be reminded of all who Jesus met. Let me just find it for you. 1 Corinthians 15. Have a look at it. It's a great little, great chapter of the Bible where Paul says, What I passed on to you is of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, but then he was raised on the third day again according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve, and then to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, then to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all to Paul on the road. To Damascus. You can have confidence in the gospel. By this gospel, verse 2, you are saved. Verse 12, if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? Verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Well, because we can have confidence in what this day means today, all that this day holds, the resurrection of Christ, our Preaching is not useless. 
and neither is our faith. Be encouraged today if you're someone who holds on to the truth of the resurrection. If you, like those women at the end of Mark's Gospel and like those disciples in the other Gospels, have experienced and come to know in confidence that Jesus is raised from the dead, you can have hope. Your faith is not useless. I'm going to pray in a moment that, that we may have that confidence. You know, you may be going through a, a difficult time. I was speaking to one or two people this week who, uh, whose health is not what they would want it to be. It can cause them to be discouraged. One of them said to me, she said, if it wasn't for my faith, I don't know how I'd get through it. She could go back, like Paul wanted the Corinthians to go back, she could go back to the resurrection of Christ and realise that faith made a difference, that there was hope, there was a future with Christ. So we're going to pray a prayer, a prayer, and the response from, from you, if you wish to respond to the prayer, is to pray, roll back the stone. A sense of asking God, who rolled back the stone, delivered the son from the tomb, resurrected, would use that same power, would show that same power in the situations in our world and in our lives. Perhaps not surprising, our minds might drift towards the images we see on the television in Ukraine and in Russia, or other countries as well where there is war, Syria, Yemen, Eritrea, they've also been in the news this week. But two, there may be personal situations, people you want to pray for. So I'm going to pray a short prayer and then if you wish to join the response, it's to say to God, God, roll back the stone. Heavenly Father, when we are despairing, when the world is full of grief, when we see no way ahead and hope has gone away, roll back the stone. Although we fear change, although we are not ready, although we'd rather weep and run away, roll back the stone. Because we're coming with the women, because we hope where hope is vain, and because you call us from the grave and show the way, roll back the stone. Lord, the situations we've lifted up to you. Lord, your word says that the power that we see in the resurrection lives in us, lives in our world through all those who are following Christ. Lord, show your power. May we see that power at work in our lives and in our world. May your hope Flow, Lord, through your world, like streams and rivers flowing through the desert. Heavenly Father, roll back the stone. Today you may be asked, or you may be thinking, what does the world think of Easter what does the world understand by Easter? Is it chocolate eggs, bunnies and all those kind of things? Or just a chance to have four days off to do a bit of work in the garden? Or maybe ask yourself that question. How would you answer that question? What does it mean? I'm just going to watch a short video now which hopefully will encourage you. A group of Christians sharing about what Easter means to them. There is always hope is the last line of the video. May you be encouraged as you watch this now. For me, Easter is not just some kind of tradition or rituals. It is much deeper. It's the story about a person named Jesus. About God's Son deciding to draw closer to me. To my worries, problems, pains. He challenged society, went against the system and broke all our stereotypes. He never sought comfort, taught us to believe, even when it seemed impossible. He doesn't care whether you are rich or poor. 
he does not look at status. For him, it's important what is inside the person, in the heart. He sees worth in everyone. He always gives a chance to start all over again. Always tells the truth, never afraid. Even in the most severe conditions, he remains true to who he is. Easter is the story of the one who brings people hope. His sacrifice shows each of us how valuable we are. He was crucified, and some thought it was an accident. But the fact remains, he died on the cross for our sins. And Easter is a symbol that there is always hope. Christ is risen. Truly risen. There is always hope. We prayed before, and no doubt some of you were praying for Ukraine as you, you were praying. May there be the truth of the resurrection in that country as believers gather possibly in, in subways, in, in cellars for safety, possibly uh, just not able to gather together at all as they would normally do. May they know the Easter truth that there is always hope. Many people around the world are responding to the crisis in Ukraine and we have done our little bit in these last few days by running a cafe through Holy Week. Um, a number of people have worked extremely hard and we're really encouraged by that and also by the wonderful response from people in our community and from a number of other churches in the town. It looks like with the cafe and with the sales of the greetings cards we've been selling, it looks like we're going to be able to raise around a thousand pounds for BMS World Mission and our work in Ukraine. Just in a moment we'll be putting some slides up again just to give you the details of that appeal. It may be you've not had the opportunity to respond yet or it may be just that Easter truth that there is always hope will give you a nudge to offer that hope to those refugees who are currently leaving Ukraine and indeed many who are internally still in Ukraine but displaced from their homes. So here are the details on the screen. Ten thousand reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy. song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his hope Your name is 
shorter Easter service uh, today we hope you understand and appreciate the service even if it has been a little bit shorter uh, our service in the building for Easter Sunday you've still maybe you may still have a chance to get there it's at half past ten on Easter Sunday morning and it's going to be quite a busy service but a wonderful celebration of Easter we're going to have the baptism of, of Gina some of you have been connected with the church for a while will know Gina she's going to be baptized so we're really looking forward to that and uh, also will be a few other elements. We're going to have uh, some cakes afterwards and Easter eggs for the children. A wonderful celebration of, of Easter. And then this evening, Easter Sunday evening at 6.30pm, we're gathering with our, our friends and brothers and sisters from Caton Baptist Church and Lancaster Baptist Church. We're gathering at Lancaster Baptist Church, which is next to the town hall. And we're gathering there at 6, th excuse me, 6 30 for a service uh, of celebration. I always think Easter evening is a wonderful time to gather because that's when the disciples they were they were starting to hear all the stories that were coming back and the, the two disciples had been on the road to Emmaus they would have come back and they would have told the stories and that real excitement of being together and then being blessed with the presence of Christ I always think it's really good to get together on Easter Sunday evening so that's tonight at 6 30. There will be an online service going live next Sunday on the 24th of April that'll be live at 8 a.m at 8 a.m yeah and we're going to be starting a new series looking at what does the Bible say about church? What happened particularly in the, in the Acts of the Apostles? After Jesus' resurrection and ascension, what happens? What are the things that God is doing there that we should see him doing in the church today? So that's what will be happening next Sunday. If you want to get in touch with the church, the details are on the screen 01524 410015 or info at stanleyroad.org.uk. And I nearly forgot, but this Wednesday, Wednesday, I don't know what date it is, what date will it be? 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, April the 20th, Wednesday, April the 20th at 7 o'clock, we've got a prayer meeting in church. So we did this uh, about six weeks ago, we had a really good evening of, of gathering together and praying together. So we're going to meet again this Wednesday from 7pm. So one last happy Easter. If you've got some chocolate, don't eat too much. And let us pray for one another now. Father God, as we go from here, we pray we'll grow in our understanding of your love for us in Christ. And may we know the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we show your love to others. For your glory, forever and ever. Amen.